Hey, 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 hi, hi, everyone. Welcome, welcome to, God, I'm so bad at introductions. This, there's, I'll never get these right. It's, uh, welcome to another glorious episode of Jeff Has Cool Friends. I'm Jeff May, you know, from Jeff Has Cool Friends. And I brought with me a cool friend. That's uh, very exciting. Uh, I'm very excited to bring my guest with me today. She's super, super cool. She has been a friend of mine for quite some time now. Uh, very, very talented and, and and such an interesting and fascinating job. I'm very excited to talk about Lainey Labens. Lainey, hi. Hi, I'm so excited to be here. I'm so excited to have you on. Uh, this is such a cool, a cool, interesting job that you have. I'm so excited to talk about it. We met in where I meet most people. Albuquerque, New Mexico. So funny. Obviously. <laughs> Obviously. You were um, talent management mm -hmm. for uh, a few celebrities that were appearing. Mm -hmm. I don't remember which ones. I do. You do? do you Who? Want me yes, to say? I I'd love to. Jason Font, Red, infamous Red Ranger, and then Richard Harmon, uh, star of a whole bunch of Canadian projects that are shown in the US and billed as US projects. <laughs> Perfect. That's. <laughs> That's most of Hollywood, yeah, isn't it? It is. Now. That's like most things where you're like, well, we're in Chicago. It's yeah. like, that's Toronto. Yeah. Exactly. That is clearly Toronto. There's that famous building. What are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that famous Toronto skyline yeah. of New York City. <laughs> exactly. So I, you might be the first person I've ever had as a guest that I struck out with. Oh. Um, God. Because, and here, this is actually very funny <laughs> um, because I am terrified of women. I'm generally terrified. And my friends were pumping me up because I was like, oh, this lady girl, she's pretty cute. And they were like, dude, go for it, go for it. And I did. And you were like, dude, no, what are you talking about? We're at work. And I was like, that's that's a, that's correct. And that's why I've always lived the life the way that I've lived. And since then, we've actually become very good friends, which thank God. Well, that's so funny because two things. One, yeah, I have very, um, so for those of the, those of you out there who don't know, I am young and I am a girl and I work in an industry largely uh, run by men who are much older. And so from day one, I decided I'm going to be very, very careful about what I do and how I conduct myself in this business because everybody's looking for a reason to say I've gotten where I am for reasons other than hard work. So I set out that from the get-go. Also, I am also terrified of men. So <laughs> To be fair, that's the correct position to be in. <laughs> Uh, no, so I'm so sorry. <laughs> you don't have to apologize for that. What are you talking about? That is not a thing you're supposed to apologize for. It's just very. It was very funny to me. First off, I did not know that you were much younger. Yeah. I thought I thought you we were much closer in age. But it was just one of those things where it was like I was just like, man, like my life is just weird right now. And then two of my very good friends were like, yeah, but like, like, come on, like, go, like, pump yourself up, man, go for it. And I was like, okay, fine. And then struck out and I was like, see guys, this is why I don't do this. Oh. But it was actually very, but it, it it was funny and affirming. And I don't think we would be the good friends that we would be if that had gone the way that my plan, which wasn't a plan, had gone. But it's just, it's, it's a very funny way to like start a friendship. And I think it's, I, I didn't want to not bring that up because I think it's, I think it's really funny. I do too. I also have to mention that my roommate, it's the same, like the same story. Really? Yeah. I mean, that maybe that's just the way to create, to like build a strong yeah. friendship yeah, circle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it, he was trying to get with, like when we first met, that was his goal. And I also am very, very oblivious. And so like, I didn't see it at all. And I was like, oh, this guy's really friendly and taking a lot of interest in my weirdo hobbies. This is so cool. Like I found so, like a friend that wants, no. I also like tend to, you know, so like I, I'm bad at cues and then I tend to go after guys who uh, like, you know, they're I don't I don't even know my my history is super weird. But I do think it's funny that some of my very closest friends, I did not pick up on that at all. It was you and same with Joey. And there's like a couple other guys that I was just like, oh, you were just like nice to me. I thought that that's like friends. Right? What's what friends do? <laughs> uh, that, that is, although uh, in my in my end, I think I was a bit more direct you are. Um, and which I've, by the way, I think you might be like one of the two times I've ever been direct. I'm not direct. I, I, I do not read cues well, uh, at all. I, d I don't know how to do it. I'm, I'm terrified of women. I hide under a pile of coats and hope they notice me. That's like my whole thing. And every time that I've actually like tried to be like, okay, you know what? I'm going to switch it up. It has been such a crash and burn that I was like, oh, yeah, that's right. That's why I oh, do that. Oh, that, I do feel bad. I should have you been. Should, you shouldn't feel bad. <laughs> I don't understand. See, that's, 
That's the patriarchy talking, is, lady. Yeah, it is the patriarchy talking. I just, yeah, well, if it's any consolation, you're in a group of just absolutely esteemed gentlemen. I mean, gentlemen is a hell of a way to put it. You, great, great, great people. Great people. I, I don't, I, that, that is, I, I try not to be, uh, I try not to be aggressive because my yeah. general vibe is aggression. So as far as the romantic world is concerned, I'm very much like, I'm like, hey man, you're a f giant. You need to maybe not loom in on anybody. I remember, <laughs> I don't know if I've ever told this story on a podcast, but what I was hanging out with a girl and I don't move until I get green lights. And I, we were having like a, a movie day. It was like a marathon day on the couch, like kind of close. It was like all the Rocky movies. It was all the Police Academy oh, movies. Oh, I was close. Surprisingly close. <laughs> uh, same era. Yeah. It was a marathon. Um, and like right between Rocky, two, uh, yeah, Rocky <laughs> two, right between Police Academy two and Police Academy three. I was like, well, now here's my moment. And I like leaned in, you know, to like, you know, I did. I made the eye contact and moved in, and she just went. Uh, Oh, no, no, no. And I, so she, and she, but she was like, very, like, I'm putting up a boundary. And then so, uh, what I wanted to say to her was like, oh, okay, we're just going to be friends. Totally cool. Uh, spoiler alert. I've not had sex with most of the people on the planet. Uh, really? That's correct. Oh, so like God. another one of those people that doesn't, that's okay. Right. It doesn't, it doesn't yeah, hurt yeah. my feelings. Yeah. So. I was gonna be. I was gonna tell her that. I'm like, okay, we're just friends. That's fine. I misread the situation. That's how this is gonna be. Totally cool. But what I ended up saying, like the way I built it together, was me saying, oh, so that's how it's gonna be. Oh no! And immediately, I like wrenched back, and I just went, whoa. And I said, okay, okay, real quick. Uh, what I meant to say was, oh, we're just gonna be friends. That's how this is gonna be. And what I accidentally said was. I'm going to kill you in your condo. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I'm so sorry. I was like, don't, I was like, please understand that I did not mean to say those words in that order. That was a mistake. I apologize. I'm so sorry. And she's like, yeah, it's fine. And I was like, are you sure it's fine? Because it doesn't seem fine because I heard the words too. <laughs> How and many I'm, more police academies did you guys yeah, have to get through after I, that? Yeah, I was like, I was like, yeah, man, we got another like uh, three hours of police academy after this rejection. That's fun. <laughs> But in, in the end, it worked out. You recently got a kitty. I did, yes. Um, and some of you might be able to hear Trinket running around. Tell me, this is the world's cutest cat. I'm going to have to agree with you on that. Um, I manifested that because I am uh, a white girl of a certain age, and that's what we're good at. Uh, no, I... So I'd been debating getting a pet for a long time. I have, as I'm sure we'll talk about, I have this job that requires that I travel a lot, and it's long hours, and it's weird. I've had a weird like two, almost three years. If I don't know if this is relatable to anybody else, but I lost the job overnight and the apartment and the car, like I lost all these things, all the, all the material things I had. I spent a lot of time reflecting and I was like, you know what? When, when I get my life back together, I'm, I'm just going to do it. I'm going to get a cat. And then I, oh, you think you have your life together? Uh, I can afford to pay rent. Hell yeah. Yeah. That's having my life together. I thought about it for a long time and then I chickened out. I was like, no, actually I'm not ready for this, whatever. Um, and my, my parents who are wonderful people, I told them how I was feeling and my dad and his, his infinite wisdom. He's, I said, well, I'm just so worried that my whole life is going to fall apart again. <laughs> not for a second, not for the first time or not for the second time, but for like the third or fourth time. And my dad said, well, you know, I raised two kids thinking that my life was going to fall apart every day. So you can have a cat, which was both comforting and terrifying. It, you're, your cat just attacked your uh, the wire here, which is very fun. You are back on. Am I back? Okay. You're back on. Okay. Uh, yeah. So this cat, by the way, is just leaping around, jumping, very cute, very energetic, um, hopping on wires, which is very fun. And she has a kombucha cap. That's I have bought her so many toys. And what does she want? The cap from my kombucha. Yeah. She's literally got going through my gym bag right now. Yeah. It's a very precious, very cute thing. I will... Um, I will take some photos and post them uh, in the comments when I post this episode. And she has an Instagram that I am very bad at keeping up with. I'm trying to to work on that because she's very fun and that's, you know, life's too short. Why not yeah. catch it up Instagrams? It is interesting to think because like I think our generation and maybe every generation involving like children or, or whatever are like, I'm not ready and I'm going to this up forever. And then they just make like... 
It's very Ian Malcolm, like life, uh, f- life finds a way. Yeah. It's funny because I really want kids and I don't think I'm going to f*** that up. I think I'm going to be so good at that. You're a good mom, yeah. I, I I think it's probably a God complex. I don't think it's probably like a positive. You're just I really cocky. Like. Yeah. I'm just, yeah. I'm just like, oh my God, I'm be so good at that. <laughs> you, so yeah, that's, it, it is interesting. I mean, you have a, a okay, your hobbies. Because because we we can get through here, but one of the things we had had a conversation, and this was before I was like I I knew a lot about your hobbies, mm-hmm. um, and you said something about guys from your high school wanting to hook up with the weird doll girl. Oh yeah, you said you said that to me. You were like, oh blah blah blah. These guys from my high school trying to hook up with the weird doll girl, and I was like, like you look like a doll. I see it. Aww. I was like, I see that. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> and then as things went by, I was like, oh, no, you collect like designer dolls, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. like expensive and fancy dolls. And you like travel with them yeah. and take photos and have people take photos with them. And um, it's wonderful and weird as shit. Yeah. So I have to go back a tad and retell that story because the way you told it makes it sound like a positive that they wanted to hook up with me. No, no. There was a, the soccer team. Wait, you went to, but you're from Texas, right? I am, yeah. It's clearly not a positive yeah, okay. that anybody from Texas wants to sleep with you. Right, exactly. So I grew up in Austin, Texas, and I went to a very high-powered, high-performing school, of which I was not one of those students. <laughs> I merely just tried to survive. And my senior year, the soccer team, which I'm sure had a bunch of national titles and was like the best ever, uh, one of the guys on the team kind of, rallied the other guys and they bet they had a bet to see who could sleep with the word doll girl. So that was cool. I didn't find out about that until after I graduated. So maybe that's for the best because I probably would have gone carry on all of yeah, them. You're she, you were she's all that. I, oh, do you know how much I hate that movie? It's a bad movie. It is. And also like the character's name is Lainey and like there's like a lot of overlap. I didn't even think yeah, about Yeah, it's like my trauma. It's my trauma before it ha- it predicted it, you know? I mean, that's fair. Yeah, it predicted my trauma. Um, I don't get that in movies because every Jeff in a movie is the bad guy. <laughs> well, and look at you. So there you go. I look like the bad guy. <laughs> I look like the bad guy. I look like the guy that made the bet on the soccer team. Yeah, yeah. Except you're tall. He was short, but yeah. Oh, they do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I'm tall enough to. She's literally your cat's in my bag. Yeah, now. I'm, so, I'm so sorry. I'm so into it. Okay, good. I'm so glad. Yeah, she. Uh, I have a because I'm fancy. I have this like. The Louis Vuitton bag that I got for my 21st birthday, uh, she climbed in recently and I was like, that's so expensive, but also you're so cute in it. I can't have you get out. You have to, you can be in there if you want. Just try not to tear it up. So she's, she's good though, but she does love, she loves getting in bags except for the one bag that she's supposed to get in when we have to go do stuff. Then it's like, I've ruined her. Yeah. You got her like a little backpack with like a a thing in it. Yes. I got her. She has a, it's like a, a spaceship and the vet read me for it. The vet was like, oh, that's cute, but is it practical? And I'm like, you don't, lady, you don't know me well enough to know that nothing I do is practical. <laughs> I mean, I would listen to the vet a little bit about I that did. one. I <laughs> did. I stopped using it after she said it. And yeah. And then I got her a soft bag, but you know, I had, I've seen, I've seen those. Yeah. The, the traveling. So, okay. So back to the Sorry. doll thing. Yeah. Oh yes. You, so you are, you, you are in this community, this doll community, yes. a community that I am only tertiarily connected to, um, where I know that Sideshow was getting into yeah. the high end dolls, mm-hmm. where I was trying to I was trying to get them to send some to you. Yeah. And then it's okay. I didn't like their dolls anyway. I just wanted it for the clout. Fair enough. That's that's <laughs> not the worst thing. And then um I had met I had met somebody that makes dolls and texted yeah. you. I forget his name. It was Robert Toner, wasn't it? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. really nice guy. Yeah. And I was like, I was like, at, at the somebody lunch. who met doll uh, who makes dolls. This is like he's like a a huge pillar in the pantheon of doll making in the twentieth century. I, I bet this is a huge blind spot for me. I'm sure he is, and and it was explained to me that he was. Yeah. To which I said. I texted you at like I snuck away and I was like, hey, is this guy anything? Because I'm having lunch with him. And you were like, the f- did you just say? Yeah. I was like, yeah, we're eating pizza, I guess. He's essentially, and this is probably not, a, luckily these two worlds don't overlap enough to where anyone can call me out on this analogy. But I'm going to say he's like the Neil Adams of. It's a very specific thing. It is. is he dead? 
No, but he oh. is he made dolls that are recognizable enough that even if you don't collect yeah. them, you're going to know that's a Tonner doll. Okay, so yeah, and he like kind of like reinvented the concept to like reflect his image in a very specific yes. way. Yes. Uh I like that. He was very nice. Just I don't know. I don't I so people know. Yeah. I've uh, never met him, so it's great to know. Yeah. And because I'm not that invested that if he was a dick, I would have been like, yeah, the guy was a dick. Yeah. Um, he was super nice and uh, and I, I was just like hanging out. It was like the social media guy and then like all these like really high end art people. And I was just like, yeah, I, I do jokes sometimes in a toy store. <laughs> uh, look at that. Good for me. So tell me, like, where does this where does the doll collect? Because it's here. Here's why. Like, I'm trying. I tried to compare it to my hobby, like mm-hmm. as I was looking into this and as I was mm-hmm. researching the show, mm-hmm. one of the things that I was want because I was like, well, I'm a superhero fan or a comic book fan but i'm not like bringing them with me right. except but i will wear them like on a shirt yeah or something like that so in a way that's me bringing my fandom with me but like a lot of the stuff that i've seen it it, it almost treats the doll like he's like it's a like a dude or, or like an actual car- like a, yeah. pr- a living person almost <laughs> what i tell people is to me it's like how people carry a dog like you take your dog with you mm-hmm. and as a society, we've accepted that that's normal. That's totally, okay, you have a dog at the restaurant. Why, to me, it's like, why is it any weirder for me to have a doll? It's A, gonna make less of a mess, potentially, and B, like it's not hurting anyone. I um, spent a very, 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 very long time being bullied and being told, this is weird, what you're doing is strange, like, why do you do this? And and I, I recently, this thought occurred to me or revelation. I had a revelation again that every, all of my success can be linked back to the dolls and how in the times that I was just unabashedly myself and enjoying them. I may have said weird in the description that I had just said, but I'm going to say this too. Um, cause it's, it's not, it's just something that I don't understand, right? which is the same thing with college football. I don't understand loving college football. Okay. Um, I used that example this morning, actually, with talking to my mom. Sorry to interrupt. No, no. You don't have to interrupt. You're the guest of the show. Um, we have, again, as a, as a society, it's apparent, it's totally normal for a bunch of adults to be really mad when an 18-year-old doesn't do, do a yeah, thing the, with the The ball, child didn't do the sport the way the sport they wanted them to do the sport, yeah. yeah. And that's totally fine. And we yell about it and like, not we, obviously, but people yell about it and they're doing this and like, whatever. But then I take a doll to the Louvre to take a picture of him with the Mona Lisa and everybody's like, oh, it's so strange. And I'm like, okay. Um, I I wrote for a doll magazine for a little while. Yeah. Um, and part of my my whole thing thing has been, I don't want to hide what I love because what I love is no weirder than what other people love. It's just not mainstream. It's just not what a lot of people do. And I I talk about it with other collectors because other collectors are very, it's very secretive and they don't like to talk about it. And they don't, you know, they, I think there are people that don't like me because I'm so okay with other people seeing this. I don't think it's nothing to be ashamed of, obviously. Um, And life's too short not to enjoy yourself. There was a while that I sort of, buried my nerdiness towards like basically like towards the end of high school Mm -hmm. I was still a nerd but like I wasn't as overt about it and I I do regret that isn't that interesting yeah I I find that the times the things when I haven't spoken up about my hobby or when I've been like no I'm not going to take a doll to that event because I don't want to answer questions or I don't want to embarrass the person I'm with I always regret it because who who I am I I, you know, it's, it's funny when people find out what I do for my job and they're like, oh, you must be super into all that. And I'm like, actually, I'm, I work so I can buy dolls. It just so happens that I have this cool job. <laughs> but if I was an accountant, I would still be doing that job just so I can buy dolls. That's what it's about. Which I, I, it's interesting because we will talk about that. I see your cat eyeing up my uh, wire yep. that connects to the <laughs> to my mixer. And I was like, no. All right, Trinket, let's Come not on. jump on this one Come specific on. wire. This is the one wire. This is like if she was like trying to like make a bomb detonate, yeah, this yeah. would be the wire to cut. She's so I know everyone's like, oh, my animal's so smart, but she's the smartest animal I've ever had. And it's it's so cool and also so infuriating because she like knows exactly. Sometimes I feel like she's she's like communicating with me. She 
will go after my very expensive chairs and I stopped her from going after one. And so she just walked over to another one. She's like, I'm going to f*** this one up Yeah, now. she's like, okay, you don't, uh, fine. Which I, which is like so dumb, but also I was like, that's so smart. She's three months, four months old and she's figured this out already. It, it is uh, it is very, very sweet. Uh, she's very sweet. So, so the, like, it's interesting, like, so your fandom, the doll fandom is very interesting. And it I've is. seen, and it's, it's, I've seen one of the things, cause I know that one of your, cause uh, I, I don't do subtle management yep, was my company. your company still is, is, is yeah. still your company. Mm -hmm. And you represent a lot of talent that goes to conventions. Yeah. This is actually, a, this, I mean, we met at a convention, yeah. so it makes sense. It does. Um, and now at this point in time too, it's very interesting because, you know, like, I'm sure at some point in time, I'll be hosting a panel with one of your people. I hope so. Like, I sure hope I sure I'm literally about to fly out. Uh, I mean, excuse me. Last weekend, I flew out to Detroit <laughs> uh, Brag. <laughs> uh, to uh, Motor City. Uh, you know, Carrie Elwes had to bail. That was a bummer. I saw that. Is it because he got bit by a snake? He did get bit by a snake, but yeah. it's for shooting. It's for a shooting schedule. And I was like, OK, what, it, what was it? Well, yeah. What are you filming? filming? What are you filming? Straight Is it there. Rescue 911? Ooh. From the snake bite, yeah, it is, yeah. Uh, but uh, no, I'm, yeah, I'm honestly like I love doing those, and I was yeah. bummed, but also like whenever that happens, because I get paid a lump sum for the weekend, oh. not per panel. Oh, really? So I'm like, that's fine. Yeah, like I don't like I don't get paid per panel. I yeah. get paid per uh, per like here's my rate for the weekend, and there and so every time that happens, like when Meatloaf told me to go f myself. Cool. I was just like, oh, man, you just gave me time off, and I don't like you, it's so this perfect. is perfect. Yeah, I can't wait for Shatner to be the next one to tell you, go f*** yourself. Well, the thing is, is I'm spe I'm doing a specific job sh for Shatner that is not hosting a panel. Right, it's, intro it's introducing. Okay. So, like, and there there were very specific rules yeah. that were, like, very... Mm -hmm. It was like, there there were... There's 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 really cool stuff that you learn about these things. And I always introduce myself to people ahead of time yeah. and say, you know, what anything you do want me to cover, anything you don't want right. me to cover, let's something we should push, something we should pull away from, something that even if somebody asks a question, I can come in and cut it off. Mm -hmm. Let me do my job to make you look amazing yeah. and I will be the bad guy if I need to be. That's the mark of a good moderator, all of those yeah. things. Yeah. Um and uh I was very lucky that Carrie Elwes, they have one. They like have like a little sheet. Oh yeah, we that's do that. Like, I do that sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Don't bring this up. Yeah. You know, do bring this up. Yeah, yeah, stuff yeah. like that. And I was like, oh, I love this guy. Yeah, yeah. It makes it easier. It's funny because I, I have had talent come to me five minutes before a panel and be like, yeah, I don't want to talk about this thing. And I'm like, oh, okay, that's huge. Would have been nice to know, maybe even just 24 hours ago. But we'll make it work. <laughs> yeah, I mean, usually, like I always like because sometimes people are like I'm not sure. Yeah. And then I go dating and family, and oh, then they're like, oh, good. okay, yeah, don't don't talk yeah, about yeah, that. Yeah, and I'm like, yeah. see, that's why I want to know oh, that. That's like, good. that's good. Yeah. I, I always kind of am like, so we can talk about your kids if that comes up. Yeah. Not, I'm not planning on it, right. but this is organic, and yeah, sometimes yeah, yeah. things come up. Yeah. And, and they were like. I like to leave my children out of my career. Yeah, and I was yeah. like, well, that's why I asked. Yeah. So I always try to assist them and help them and not annoy them. Who <laughs> who do you rep? I should probably explain my job transitioned a little bit. Um, okay. Well, I'm because I'm about to get to oh, that. Oh, okay. You're getting so to I'm it. gonna I'm I'm, I'm okay. we're gonna be doing chunks. Okay. Um, I love that. And I I swear to God, I'm gonna get we're gonna get to the other part of the okay. job. Because I wanna talk about I don't do subtle. Yes. First, because that kind of leads into that transition. So I want to talk about IDDS first okay. and who's on that, like who are the people that you rep? So I have really, really, really prolific ADHD, which I'm sure everyone listening to this has figured out by now. So I apologize in advance for when I jump around. Um, so IDDS uh, is a company that I started with my business partner. I was 20 years old when we started it. And I rep some very interesting names, interesting to me at least. Uh, Rep Ty Olson, who I say his name first because it's going to lead into the next name. He is consummate sci-fi actor. He's been in every sci-fi project for the last 15 years, it feels like. His best friend is DJ Qualls. And DJ Qualls is one of my favorite people I work with. He, The two of them together are really fun, and traveling with them has been really fun. I'm, I actually was going to try to hit you up to get him on my sideshow. Podcast. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Well, um, I and then I left your career with a sideshow with my previous. <laughs> it's the name it's that's so <laughs> funny that it's so funny that that happened because my last episodes, the guests were so strong, but I definitely got myself fired. Like, okay, because I was really worried it was Ricky. <laughs> no, let me tell you, that was a huge get. 
Really? Uh, that was great. That was perfect. They were very happy with that. Yeah, they liked the, him. The, the irony being that this was all happening at a time where I was being more vocal about politics. Mm. And they Got were it. very much like, you can't do this. Yeah. Like we have a brand that we have to protect. Yeah. And I was like, are we not do- going to say anything about all these problems? And they were like, no, and you can't either. And I was like, well, I sure am going You're, to. Yeah, yeah. And when, you know, like obviously like the, re- I'm, I'm not good with rejection. I spiral low, but that one I recovered from the rejection so fast because I was like, no, this is for the best. Yeah. I've maintained my integrity this entire time throughout my career. There are very few people points in my career where I can say that I lost integrity, that feels like a win even if I lost something. And I then like that. rebounding to this. Yeah, this is great. This yeah. is so fun and you're so good at this. Well, I'm glad because I thought that Ricky Whittle, my one of my clients, I thought that he got you fired and how, I felt bad about it for a long time. How could you possibly think that I he would have been I don't know. I was like, what did you say? <laughs> nothing. Literally nothing. Uh, American Gods is a great show. I'm yeah. really upset that they um, You're not that they canceled it because yeah. I was really – like my roommate and I would watch that every Sunday night. Yeah. She was like, American Gods time. Oh, And yeah. she was like, she was like, I love him. He's so hot. I'm like, yeah, that's kind of the thing, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, he's okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, and, and just, oh, he's so funny and, you yeah. know, blah, blah. He is, and he doesn't get credit for that. No, he was on autopilot when I had him on the show too. He was like the easiest guest I've ever had. That he and to work with, he's the easiest person. He's just yeah. like very easy. He's just very easygoing guy. So I work with Ricky Whittle. He was on a show called American Gods. He's on a show called The Hundred. I work with some other cast members from that. Uh, I probably one of. I mean, I love everybody equally, but one of my favorite people I've worked with is Amber Nash from Archer, because mm. she's she's Pam. She's Pam. Yeah. And she's so down to earth and so funny. And we did Planet Comic Con in Kansas City, which I don't know if you've been to that show. Yeah. I'm wearing a Kansas shirt. Granted, yeah. Kansas City's in Missouri. Right. I've never done the show, but oh, I love great. Kansas City. Like, uh, it's I, fun, right? I weirdly, Same. it's one of my favorite cities. I did not, exp- I'm very, uh, I'm a snob. And so I was not. I did not have high expectations, but my good friend Andy Parks lives there and he took me around and I was like, this city's so cute and so fun. So Planet Comic Con is a great show. I would say it's one of my favorite Comic Cons I've ever done in the world. Uh, I definitely recommend going if you haven't. It's just so pure Comic Con in its- Which is rare. Like Wicked Comic Con in Boston is starting to do that too. Yeah. yeah. They, they're that. I mean, Baltimore Comic Con was like that. Yeah. Heroes Con. Um, it, it, it's in that sweet spot of being like big enough to where it has- big talent coming and lots of attendees, but still, but doesn't, it's not corporate. It doesn't feel overproduced, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Um, So I went with Amber and it was my first show to to go with her versus my business partner going or somebody else, a handler going. And it was just so, it was so funny because she plays this cartoon character that she kind of looks like, but we read out. She's like the model for the character, right? Kind of. Yeah. yeah, I think so. I don't know exactly how all that works on Archer, but I do know several of them that I have met. Look, I'm like, oh, you look like your character. I, I remember yeah. a lot of them were yeah. modeled specifically off of that. I yeah. know that they they got a look alike for Jessica Walter. Okay. Um, yeah. But uh, I don't know why I read an article about it or something where it was like right. all the all the body actors and voice actors yeah, yeah, yeah. for the characters. So she was we ran out of eight by tens of the character and all we had left were eight by tens of her and the amount of people that were like, oh, I don't want a photo of you it was so funny. And she, I was so embarrassed. I was like, oh, gosh, she's going to be so upset, blah, blah, blah. And she she thought it was hilarious. And I was like, OK, great. We're going to be buds. You can laugh yeah. at yourself. You can laugh at all of this. We had a blast. She's so fun. Um, and so just understated, I've never, you know, I've only seen a couple episodes of Archer and, but I recommend it to people because I love Amber. I'm like, oh, you should watch Archer because the, the, I work with this woman who's on it and she's so wonderful. So I've worked with, I've worked with a ton of different people from all walks of life. I started my career working with Power Rangers. Um, I've worked with a lot of CW actors. I've worked with, I've seen photos of you in a Power Ranger costume. Yes. So yes. you are a fan of that. Uh... I was growing up i was right weren't I, we all yeah i was super super into it uh I, I always say that my girl power girl power icons are the pink ranger buffy and uh josie from josie and share from clueless and josie from josie and the pussycats so i, those I live right near where share got mugged oh that's so fun at that clown liquors 
like yeah, circus, liquor, circus liquors. Yeah. Oh, that's fun. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah. People are like, what part of what part of LA do you live in? I'm like, the the robbery scene so in Clueless. Funny. That's so funny. Come on by. <laughs> well, I, I can do you one better. Right in front of my building is where the bus explodes at the beginning of Speed, the inciting incident. Yeah, yeah. You live in a much more a cooler neighborhood than mm, I do. It's pretty sketch at times. I mean, it's sketch because yeah. it's it's the city that you're in is yeah. is relatively sketchy, yeah. but it doesn't get less as you go more inland. That's true. Yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> I used to live in Hollywood. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so, so now you've you've repped a lot of people. Yep. I, I mean, I've seen it, and and you know, I I see you at cons, you know, all the time individually. Yeah. Like like I'll just be there, and I'm like, oh, f yeah. Like there you are, yeah. and it's a delight. Uh, I, I really, I mean, come on. You're my cool friend. Why that's wouldn't so I be excited about say. that? And um, I another thing that's a delight, by the way, and I don't know if you know this, but uh -oh. if you go to my Patreon at patreon.com slash Jeff May and you sign up for the producer tier, you can pay a little extra money and I will say your name out loud. Why would I do such a thing? Because I'm a whore. And um, it's like an emotional whore, but a whore nonetheless. Yeah, um, I, I pride myself on it. I feel very good. Everybody is better than me. Um, but I will do, <laughs> I will absolutely do this. So that being said, um, I would like to thank the, uh, the following people. So a big shout out to when I learned Taco Bell is bringing the Mexican pizza back. I got excited, but then I got worried that it made me happy. Uh, uh shout out to jocular, haggard, cantankerous fool. Uh, you're going to notice a lot of JHCF, uh, acronyms here. Okay. Cool. So it's gonna, it's just going to happen. Uh, Jeff may convince me to quit Twitter and you should quit too, because it's awful. I don't remember convincing anyone to quit Twitter, but if you can do it, do it. Unless you follow me, then don't do it because I need those numbers or else people will think I'm not good at stand-up comedy, which is not Twitter. Mm. But sometimes comedians speak in Twitter format. They sure do. Uh, and, uh, and uh, well, the thing about Twitter is that Twitter is um, for premises, not really for like right. long-form jokes. Yeah. So you'll see these Twitter comics try to do it in stand-up and it's like well you got to have a punchline now i saw one the other day that's made me think of it really yeah like live yeah oh oh because you you were at uh, the festival yeah, right yeah, yeah. well who was the comic maybe they're great he was great yeah who he was, was it great. it was jared goldstein i love jared he's goldstein. so good but it was there was a couple there was a couple jokes that i was like oh that would crush on twitter jared goldstein beautiful oh gorgeous a gorgeous man and that was there was a hilarious bit about like the, there was a camera that was following him and he has this beautiful hair and he was doing all this stuff. Anyway, you had to be there. Sorry, that's the worst when you talk about I'll put it. No, no, it's fine. Because I, a funny story about Jerry Goldstein is, um, you know, my girlfriend is bisexual and she was like talking. She was like, so there was like, and I was like, yeah, He's I'm bragging that he has I'm, a girlfriend. I'm cool. like boringly straight. <laughs> and I was just like, we know by your outfit. I was like, yeah, right. <laughs> I, I was real dad energy in my clothes. And I was like, uh, which is not fair because I have cool clothes. I'm just not wearing them now. Sure. So there's like no guys, like no guys that you find attractive. I'm like, well, I was like, Jared Goldstein is attractive. I recognize that. So beautiful. But then when you get down to the genital part, it just is, it's not for me. Right. Like that's like a turnoff for me. It's yeah. just the way it is. Uh, I, it's, you can't get mad at what does and doesn't make, give you a boner. Th yeah. That's so true, Queen King. <laughs> go off king go off king but i was but jared goldstein incredibly funny he's yeah. done, done mint on card and, and oh, just like he? uh oh yeah of course most of the people you've seen at that festival probably have done a mint on card at some point in time <laughs> shout out to Squatch and clippy are jeff's coolest friends those are characters from another podcast that i did oh, cool. shout out to michael wells shout out to nicholas happy to pay more for this privilege fabian the local man at Gavin underscore not, not with two T's. Jeffrey Bezos, the worst Jeff. Hard agree. Mm -hmm. Ass of bass. Sh <laughs> shout out to Adam Warlock. He wants your soul. Verbose minimalist. Shout out to at the pajama rye on Instagram for pictures of my feet of strength. Mm. Shout out to Kale's only true purposes as the garnish at a 1996 Pizza Hut buffet. <laughs> Are you a Kale fan? No, it tastes like dirt. It's rough, right? I want to like it because, like, I want to be hot, but... Nailed it. Um, <laughs> the funny thing about kale is it's not much different than other greens to me. Okay. Where it's just, like, you got to power through it, but it's just, like, you're, you're... It's, like, a real tough guy. Yeah. It's the yeah. tough guy of leafy greens. It is. Where you're eating it, and it's, like, you're, it's like a street fight. I like a soft spinach. I, I, like, a, I like a spinach salad, for sure. Yeah. I like a romaine. Oh, I like yeah. a simple romaine. Yeah, like a little crunch. Um, not a butter lettuce fan. 
No. Butter lettuce feels like you found it under the couch. Yeah. Well, it's what you eat. It's like the first lettuce you accept as a child, I think. Well, iceberg is Iceberg is that one, yeah. which is like the McDonald's of lettuce. Yeah, but like, have you, you know, Bolinelli burger was just a hunk of like, of like iceberg. Well, a, a what? A bro- bowling alley burger? Like as in at a bowling at alley? A bowling oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. It's the worst is when you get it like a salad. And it's just, and it, there's like still like the core yeah, is yeah. somehow in there. And it's you're like, you didn't even give a shit about this. No, I, so I have celiac, so I don't eat bowling alley burgers anymore, but I did before I was diagnosed and I'd be like, why am I dying? Anyway. But so when you go to a restaurant, you ask for the gluten-free menu and then that's what they bring you as the core of the iceberg. That's, that's what the gluten-free like, Here you go. Yeah, they're like, enjoy. Eat it. Yeah. Dirt bag. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, shout out to Christy Salinas. Parker Aylesworth is not that tall. He has fake legs. Nice try, Parker. I know you're tall. Three Jacob Tremleys in a trench coat sneaking into an R-rated movie. <laughs> Shout out to Where's Clawful. See, I have a weird collection. I collect Clawful. What is that? He's an action figure. He's a He-Man character. Oh. And I, I have other toys, but like I have like a whole Clawful section. And he's just a big lobster man. I have a couple He-Man. Qu- I have a He-Man question for you after this. You can ask it right now if you want. Okay. Um, do the Battle Cats have names? Battle Cat. Okay. And Panthor. Oh, okay. So one does have a name. Battle Cat is his name. He starts it's more as of cr- a title. Well, that's like, n- well, no, because let's like if He Man is a title because oh, okay. there's Adam and Cringer, okay. which are boy and cat, tiger really, and then when they have the power, it's He Man and Battle Cat. Got so it. his name is Battle Cat when he's in the gear. It's like Batman. He's yeah. Oh, we heard you. Yeah. We did. Um, okay, thank you for thank you for answering that for me because I googled it and I couldn't find anything. And then um, Skeletor has one called Panther. Okay, that's basically just like a battle cat, but yeah, 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 but a panther. Okay, that's cool. Um, so a shout out to Cronenberger Meister Meisterberger. Uh, <laughs> shout out to it was me, Jeff. I've been giving you ten dollars a month since the beginning, so you could afford more gas station pop tarts, keeping you sluggish, <laughs> just slow enough for me to steal Christmas. Gas station pop tarts are my favorite dirtbag food. What is the? So, can you, is there a? You can buy pop tarts at the grocery store. Yeah, they come in a little silver yeah, foil in the box. Yeah. Gas station pop tarts are like it's an individually wrapped oh. in a blue, and there's no reason I like them. Only then, other than I'm not buying, I'm not buying pop tarts in bulk. Oh, no, like I'm not going to buy them in a box because I'll eat them all. But Where, if I'm traveling, yeah. I'm going to be like, ah, I'm going to grab a yeah, pop tart. Yeah. yeah, it's a balanced breakfast. Are you a Pop Tart fan? Uh, I can't have Pop Tarts because of the gluten. celiac. Yeah. yeah, it seems like that's not real. That wouldn't be real gluten, right? Like it's yeah. that doesn't seem like it's at, like that seems like it's a shortening. It's like the vel. It's like there shouldn't be dairy in Velveeta. You're right. It's the Velveeta yeah. of of yeah. Uh, yeah. Like, no, that's the best way of putting it. It throws me off every time. I'm like, I should be able to eat this, but I because it's a molecule away from plastic, but I can't because of the dairy. The dairy wow. is why. So eat? celiac is a dairy thing too. It's, it's a secondary allergy. Usually with celiac. A second dairy allergy. Oh, it's so good. Uh, kill me. Uh, usually people with celiac will have a a secondary tertiary. They'll have extra allergies because like we call those bonus allergies. Yeah, bonus allergies. Yeah, I've got them. Good for you. Hey, good for you. Um, we like that. Um, shout out to in Soviet Russia, we have cool Jeffs. Shout out to L Chicken Nuggets, Tenders, or Wings, Seldo. Are you in? I'm guessing you would have to go wings, right? Because you can't eat anything I w- breaded. I wouldn't go either. Well, that's not true. I, I eat gluten free chicken chicken tenders like no other if yeah. I can find some. Yeah. Fair. Yeah. Yeah, I'm a tenders guy. Yeah. I don't like the I, wings are kind of upsetting. They're gross, right? Yeah. And it takes a lot of chickens to make a basket of wings when yeah. you think about it. You're like, I killed a dozen chickens yeah. just so I can vomit these out after yeah. I leave Hooters. Yeah. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah. <laughs> God. Like everyone like thinks they're like, wings are so good. I'm like, there's so many non-meat things. Yeah. There's a lot happening there. There's so many non-meat <laughs> things. Shout out to Aaron Meyer. Shout out to Jolly Buckaroo and The Last Yeehaw. The Ghost of Dave Thomas. The Digital Phil. I, by the way, I'm reading these while your cat is biting my feet. Yeah. So shout out to my professionalism. Shout out to Silius Ruby, Ruby, Jessica Robertson, Lisa Harden, my co-producer at Mint on Card. Shout out to Who's the Master? Show enough. <laughs> Kelly says, get your booster, you gaslighting dip turds. Everyone check out the 1994 comedy, Twin Sitters, the 90th movie ever made. The itty bitty Millie committee pity the fool that. That one's just like a prank on me to have okay. to say that bullshit. 
Do you, do they come up with these? Do you think I would come up with these? I don't know, Jeff. I don't know what you do in your personal time. I don't have personal time. <laughs> okay. Well, I host four podcasts and I travel to different conventions. That sounds like all personal time if you ask me. <laughs> it doesn't it? It sure does until you have to do, do it, it to survive. Yeah. And then it becomes, <laughs> I took, I took a, I was like sick. I got, I got roasted by Valerie because I got sick with COVID yeah. and still got dressed every day. I still like wore jeans and stuff like that. And she's yeah. like, what is wrong with you? And I was like, I have work to do and I will not get work done if I'm in like sweats or really? whatever. I, I have to, I have to be dressed. That's big in, dad or, energy as well. I have dad energy. Yeah. Like the fact that I'm most likely never going to be a dad is a huge tragedy yeah. because I have such dad good dad energy yeah. and also good dad experience. Right, because you used to shape young minds. I've, and not only that, but like the boxing thing and the growing up on a farm thing. At like, there's a lot of lifetime called. They want their story back. I I I balance. I've I've made this joke before. It's never really worked in stand up, but like I have this perfect balance of like aggressive new uh, New England violence guy mm -hmm. and like pompous New England educated guy. Yep. Uh, where I just I have that level of education, but I also am like. If I was a fighter. Yeah. Joey, so, Joey's from Gloucester. Gloucester. Yeah. The, the, which is the first, the home of the first commercial fishery in, uh, in the, the United States of America. Okay. Mr. School, I believe you. I used to go fishing out of Gloucester all oh, the time. Oh, really? Yeah. He, he, I think did some of that. I don't know. Yeah. With the Yankee fleet. Your cat is literally climbing <laughs> all so over sorry. my foot. She's I'm surprised you didn't take a photo of that. I did get a photo of it. Oh, you did? Yeah. You weren't paying attention. I, I was paying attention. Oh. I saw you doing it, but I didn't want to. That was very fun. Yeah. Um, shout out to, geez, I don't even know where I am. Uh, let's see. Uh, Taurus Bulba, Dan Hackroyd, Burrito Mouth. Shout out to Norm from Cheers from Kansas City. Yeah. And also, he's the one that checks for all the swears in my episodes and sends them back. Norm from Cheers is? His name is Norm from Cheers. Oh, okay. I thought you meant the actual Norm from Cheers. Like George Wendt? Yeah, I was like, you mean Jason Sudeikis' uncle? George Wendt is Jason Sudeikis' uncle? Yes. Wow. Isn't that wild? Information you just find out. Mm -hmm. That's like how you and McGregor's uncle was Wedge Antilles. Oh, that makes so much sense. Isn't that wild? It doesn't make any sense at all, but I really love that. Right? He was the guy. He was not the voiceover for Wedge. The actual guy. The actual yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. the voiceover is another guy. Voiceover from the movies? Yeah, like who's doing the talking is not the guy who's in the... Yeah, I don't know. I don't look. I didn't look that deeply into it. Okay, well, I this is forced knowledge, by the way. I didn't. It, of course. <laughs> uh, and for those listening, it's forced knowledge. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, shout out to Lemming Malloy. Bring back Pepsi Blue. Instagram and Twitter's at Bob underscore of underscore Skull. Mackenzie Sisyphus may be happy, but he's into CrossFit, so f him, chill. <laughs> uh, I'm never gonna have a history podcast, you little shits, So stop asking. Oh, <gasps> that'd be so cool. I kind of have one coming. Okay. Once advertising is a bit of a history podcast, I guess. Okay. We have a uh, shout out to the scene in Meet Bo Joe Black where Brad Pitt dies. <laughs> shout out to Thor. Creature, feature, creature, feature, Thor. Is there instructions that you have to say it that way? I know what this, uh, this is a friend of mine though, oh, okay. and a former guest of the show actually. Oh. And uh, we used to be obsessed with this metal singer who was a bodybuilder who called himself Thor. Sure. And that was one of the introductions to one of his albums. And it's hilariously That's bad. Fun. I like that. Shout out to Dr. DNA. Uh, <laughs> shout out to Eschelis and his tortoise. That is a reference to, that's a reference to bullshit. Oh, good. When I got wrong one of the questions, I didn't believe one of the people oh. that Eschelis died when a tortoise fell on their head. Is this, is this a story from mythology? Uh, like mythology? Greek mythology. Yeah, yeah, it sounds like Greek mythology. Um, so we got that going for us. Love that. Uh, so it's good to know that you all watched. Uh, spoiler alert, I won. Uh, <laughs> shout out to Lisa McCarty from uh, Austin. Works oh. at Austin Books and Games. Or oh, Games and Books. Yeah, I know Books and is. Games. Games and Books. Who is at Comics Book Girl. Comics with an X and Girl with a U. Shout out to Mike Gouts, Cody Beck, Mr. Billy Beck, Steven. The target loss prevention officer currently hunting Jeff. Uh, it is not. Uh, it is well known that I shoplift from Target whenever I go. Okay, specifically Target. Uh, and that specifically peanut M and M's. Okay, and because you're too good to shoplift peanut M and M's from Walmart. No, I don't. Well, I don't really go to Walmart very often. Um, too good. I don't live near one. 
Oh yeah, I don't know where it, there's, there's a Target right down the street. There's for a me. tar there's a Walmart in Downey. That's the only one I know where it is. Yeah. So it's uh, there's one in like Burbank. Yeah. But like I just go to Target. Yeah, yeah. Um, but also like I think it's a privilege for them that I shop there because sure. I spend a lot of money. So I always grab myself a nice little king size M and M's, uh, throw it on the throw it on the carriage, That's and fun. then um, you know, when I go to the movies next. I'll eat those M&Ms. So you're, you're doing it. You, you're getting them. Soft crimes. Soft, soft corporate crimes. Soft M&M based crime. I love it. I love it. Yeah. Uh, it's like, take that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Kimball the casual Frankenstein. In the time since he changed his name on this document, Jez Butt had a kid, got a new job, and got COVID. Oh. I hope only one of those is gone. You guess which one. Oh. Shout out to Asking7, Tyler Wilgus. Jeff using Deep Blue Sea memes to break <gasps> bad news. I love Deep Blue Sea. I saw Deep Blue Sea in the theater five times. Okay, well, I was very young when it came out, so I did not. I was not. Because <laughs> I am old. <laughs> Shout out to Gray Man of the Nightmare Potluck. Everyone is welcome at the table. Show me in the rules where it says a dog can't play basketball. And that's that's wrong. There's probably in the rules. Shout out to Funky J. Farty Marty tried Jeff's egg-based diet, and all he got was this stupid nickname. Mm -hmm. Ooh, I had a breakfast burrito for dinner last night. That's cool. So good. Yeah. You know what the best thing on a breakfast burrito is? Eggs. Sriracha mayo. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. It's the best thing to put on so, eggs. So being from Austin, Texas, I'm a big breakfast taco person, and they just – that's a confusing – idea in los angeles you don't like anytime i say the word breakfast taco everybody like stops and they're like do they i in my experience maybe it's just how i'm saying it or maybe you're saying it to people that are like hardcore transplants because breakfast maybe. mexican like and then the word of mexican food is pretty well appreciated I, that it's it's a tortilla with eggs and right, then something but they else want everything to be a burrito and i'm like no it's different it's not that different oh well i agree with it's you. just it's it's only different in the way that tacos and burritos are different. Right, but it's different. Listen, that difference killed the dinosaurs. The difference between tacos and burritos, what lies in between, we don't even know. I think we do know. It's, I don't it's think just we know. volume. I think it's specifically <laughs> it's, just volume. It's corn versus flour is what it is. Because I can't eat a flour tortilla. Okay. And you can't make a burrito out of a corn tortilla. It's a That's fair. Yeah. Which is a bummer because a flour tortilla from a flavor and mm -hmm. consistency perspective is the superior tortilla. I'm going to let you in on a little secret. Not everybody knows this. Gluten is better. Everything with gluten is, is just better than things without gluten. But that's just not the cards I was dealt. I've had to have this conversation with more than one person in my life where I've said gluten-free does not mean diet. No. Oh, it's no. not a health food. No. And I've had to explain that to people like, well, I got the gluten-free bread. I'm like, look at the carbs. There's it's the exact it. same. And yeah. it's just replacing yeah, certain yeah, yeah. things with carbs for yeah. that. It's like the binding agent or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. It's the, yeah. It's, yeah. It's like, oh, you can't have this protein. So we're going to put, we're going to put tapioca protein in instead. It's, um, which, uh, by the way, tapioca pudding is a delight. Oh, I don't like pudding. I love yeah, I don't do pudding. You don't know, like the consistency of it? Well, it's all, yeah, and it's a lot of dairy. Like, I've never been, there's oh, a pudding the place dairy. near me. There's like a full I'm 100% going to that after I leave. Yeah, it's on Abbott Kinney. Hell yeah. Yeah, it's called Poodoo Poodoo or something. It's oh, it's really on Abbott Kinney? I'm yeah. not going. Yeah, exactly. That's why I told you, because I knew once I told you where it was, you were going to be out. Abbott Kinney is too trendy of a, of a street for me to be allowed on. That's why I live over here. I'm so not good looking street. enough to go on Abbott Kinney. That's just the <laughs> rules. When they, they see me go on there and they're like, sir, are you lost? Actually, you're just a little tall, is what it is. I am. I'm tall. Yeah. I'm, t I'm tall for the city. You're tall for, you are tall for the city. Yeah. yeah. Like I'm always just like, that was like when I, I had a, uh, I almost was an agent of shield. Oh, but like, as like a, you know, an extra. Sure. And, but I didn't get it cause I was too tall. Yeah. I believe that. And they were just like, well, the rule is that nobody is taller than Thor. Oh. And apparently I was like the same height as yeah, this dude or whatever. Chris Hemsworth. Chris Hemsworth. Yeah. And so I was, they were like, and I was like, what? And they were like, well, and I was like, are you guys going to get a Hemsworth on the show? They're like, no, but maybe. Right. And then so I, you know, my mom's like, so do you get that? You know, when you're early and you like yeah. have po prospects and you tell yeah, you people about them. Be, do things. Yeah. Uh, and then, you know, I told my mom and she's like, well, don't they like stand on crates or something? I'm like, they're not going to do that for an extra. No. And the thing is, is like everyone else, they, the whole canon has been everyone, all the agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. are shorter than Thor. And then if you show up, yeah. you've ruined the canon. Yeah. No, no. Uh, it's essentially like humans right. aren't allowed to be exactly. in, taller than that in God. In this universe, they're not as tall. Right? Yes. Yeah. 
but now I don't know what's happening in that universe, but I feel like things got all messed up. Now you probably could be. I movie. should, sh I should be like, yeah. And they're like, we haven't done this show in like forever. Yeah, they're like, no one, it's not even on. I watched it for like a season and a half. And then I was yeah. like, I'm good. Yeah. I, so my job has ruined my ability to love those kind of things. Cause I would, I would love, like if I, it, there's a, parallel universe laney who goes to every like it's midnight premiere of every marvel movie yeah but it's not this laney no you just no. over them now i just i think that they are wonderful but i get uh i get weird work fomo i'm like when they'll announce like the next person for this role and i'm like oh i want to even if I don't want to work with them, I want to work with them because of the prestige and it's yeah. such it's such niche like no one cares. Industry but the thing. good part about that is that that's more likely now than it ever has been with your current yes, job. And yes. we'll talk about that in a second. Um, shout out to Gerard Ruane. Kool-Aid Molotov says Twitter jail sucks, but telling Ted Cruz to fall onto a box of scorpions with poop tip stingers was <laughs> worth it. Agreed. I got banned. I, for, I got a 12 hour ban for telling the governor of Tennessee that I hope he slips and falls in the tub every day for the rest of his life. I don't, that's, they're getting, they're getting wise to it. And I would also love to shout out my friend Chantal, who said the best follow-up to that was, I hope he only falls once. Ooh, that's good. And I was like, damn, that's, that's funny. So good. That's like the Irish with uh, Margaret Thatcher. Right. You know, you know what I'm yeah. talking about? Yeah, that's good. Uh, shout out to Gregarious Gregorio, Goji, Jeff hates competitive fun. See, that's also a reference to right. you don't even like sports. Yeah. Which is, uh, shout out. That is a weird thing about you. I'm going to say that. What? That you don't like sports. Why well, you How could you say that? I know. I do. Uh, okay. Well, it's weird. That's the name of the podcast. I know, but it's weird that you're not. It's weird that you're not sports. That you're like nerd guy. Not a bro -y sports guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, a lot of people think I follow boxing because I was a boxer for so long. Oh. And I'm like, no, that's not. Do people follow boxing? Oh, yeah. Oh. It's very popular. My knees are starting to hurt now, oh, yeah. and everyone's just like, "What happened?" And I was like, "Well, I've been boxing for 21 years, yeah. So like, I voluntarily let people beat the shit out of me. Yeah, you don't come out of that well. Yeah, I've lost more than one tooth because of this. That's like, wild. It is uh, good stuff. Good, good for you, Jeff. Yeah, good, good for you, <laughs> Rudy. What's your favorite Pokemon, Rueda? I mean, you have a Pikachu over there. Yeah, the Pikachu's on the, not my favorite. Do you want to know? My favorite? Yeah, I would love my to. My favorite is Togepi. Togepi is number 151. That, that, I that is an aggressively cute. I, I um, like aggressively cute things. Yes. Yeah. yeah. No, the Togepi is is a correct answer for you, I guess. Yes. Uh, mine is the weird magician one that is got that mine? made that creep sue sue Nintendo because of him. Kadabra or Alakazam oh, or something. Oh, oh, yeah. Because apparently the Japanese, it was that that guy that like yeah. really like skeevy. Yeah. There was a skeevy like mentalist who got called out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Alakazam uh, is the it goes Abra Kadabra. And then Alakazam, yeah. Yeah. So uh, the reason I like that Pokemon is mostly because he's. He got he got Nintendo sued by a creep, and I think that's really funny. I think that's so fun. I really love Pokemon. That's another thing about me. Yeah. Like, love it. Yeah. I, I, I enjoyed it. Yeah. I watched it even. Yeah. Do you know Veronica Taylor? I do know Veronica She's Taylor. a delight. She's so, so sweet. Yeah. She, she did my uh, New York Comic Con panel oh, that I did. Yeah. The sideshow one. She well, came on. We had her at New York last year. She's a delight. <laughs> She's, She's so one wonderful. of the nicest people yeah, in the world. Yeah, she is. With voice actors, it's always interesting because they, they play people that are very, you know, a lot of times instrumental in your childhood. And it's like, hey, don't f*** this up. Don't be mean to me. Don't yeah. be. <laughs> and they honestly, voice actors rarely are. Yeah. They, like, yeah. Yeah, there are yeah. very few voice actors that are. I went on, I hung out with a very much older voice actor. You were about to say went on a date. Yeah, but I don't think it can, it can't, it, I, it, he thought it was a date. I did not. I brought friends with me because I didn't realize that that was the thing. Oh, he must have been so bummed. He was. He never talked to me again. <laughs> yeah. In fairness to me, I was 23. He was 60 something. Okay. So, Calm down, guy. So I think like. Calm down. He knew what he was getting into. I don't understand that. I don't understand that. I was having this conversation with somebody yesterday. The guys, even my age, yeah. going after somebody who's 23. Yeah. It's like, I understand that like 23 year olds are can be hot. Sure. I get it. I okay. totally understand. Yeah. But like, is not, there's a lot of downtime in between that. Right. So what do you talk about? Because like half of the conversation would be this guy being like, hey, do you remember? Oh, no, you don't because yeah. you weren't alive for at least 20 years before yeah. this happened. So the he was very into like putting on a show. So he mm. was just constantly breaking into voices. And of course, I loved that because I was 
23 and it was every yeah i was like yeah <laughs> you did that one now um but i outside of that i don't know and now i think i was a very interesting 23 year old but i still i look at it now at the age that i am and i wouldn't even entertain if a 23 year old asked me on a date i would be like no. Well, because interesting, I, I don't think it's enough because there's no. a lot of loss for shared experiences. Yeah. Which I think is like, huge. like I, I couldn't. Do too. I think that's so important. I don't think I could date anybody in their 20s. Even 29, I think would be really hard for me. Yeah. Like that's too much. Like 30, okay. Yeah. Like I understand, like there's a bit of a break, but you've had enough experiences in your life that there's probably that form of common ground. You know what's really but, dark and horrible is that how many men would told me they wouldn't date me because I was in my 20s, but they were dating me, but they just wouldn't commit to me because I was in my 20s. Oh, that's just them being. I know. But isn't that funny how it's like, it's a good, I believe you when you say it, but it's like a great out for other men to be like, you know, when I'm like, what are we? And they're like, oh, well, you're in your 20s. Like, I couldn't seriously date you. And I'm like, oh, okay, you were seriously dating me be right before yeah. I asked this conversation, <laughs> asked this question. Yeah. No, it's it's mostly just because I, I don't think, like, I also feel like I would be boring for somebody that young, too. Yeah. Like, I'm like, like all the that I've done, like, that's probably, like, we grew up with different commercials and but PSAs. See, that's because you're in a pop culture. I'm the same way. Because, like, yeah. I know people who they don't, know anything about pop so i don't know what they talk about in general i think older guys and this is maybe i'm projecting what i think other people yeah. do but like i think a lot of it is like oh somebody i can mold yeah so the last person i went on a date with was he is 60 jesus yeah very lovely and this is and he's so wonderful but i did find that like the shared experience thing is we obviously didn't have a lot of that, but I just kept, but he's like the same age as my parents. So like I could understand what he was talking about yeah. and relate to things because of like my parents, but I don't know that that's, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I'm actually really relieved. <laughs> like I was thinking about this not too long ago where I was just like, I'm so lucky and happy that I'm attracted to age appropriate women. Yeah. Especially in this town. Yeah. And, and I know people that are, you know, eight years older than me, eight years younger than me or whatever that are just like, I can't seem to get a date. And I'm like, you're so hot. I can't seem to get it. That's why, not, that's not why I went on the date with this. You went on several dates with men in their 60s that, that are voice These actors. were different <laughs> times, yeah. But yeah, I no, I have a tough time dating in general because I'm strange and I don't, cues are hard for me and I have weird hobbies. And so like when this guy asked me out I was like yes because he is nice and he is handsome and whatever but also I was like it's been a long time since someone approached me like a human in like a human way human yeah yeah, yeah. Is... versus like negging me to death which is never gonna I, I could never I'm never gonna go out with someone who does it and that's like 90% of what I get really? oh yeah all the time I couldn't imagine just being that I mean that being said like I I mean, I've gone on record. Like, I, I don't, I don't even let people know I'm attracted to them, and it, it yeah. you know, it's because whoever says they like you first loses. <laughs> I, could, I remember, I remember every rejection more than I remember every acceptance. Yeah, and and like I'm, I'm sure that's a very psychologically common thing. Probably, yeah. I guess. I mean, I feel the same way. I also think that you and I have a similar kind of like. I don't know. I think that we we have shared experiences and shared perspectives. If I I used to be, I used to look really different than I look now, and I internally yeah, we're ugly duckling kind of yeah, situation. Yeah, internally I'm the exact same person, the exact same person, but the how society perceives me has changed completely, and I haven't mentally caught up to that, and I don't I don't know that I, at this point I'm not sure that I ever will. I've recognized it. And that's mainly because when I got into comedy, they were like, the first thing you need to do is be aware of what you look like and what that's the so way other people perceive you. Yeah. And so a lot of my material is about how different my brain is from my body. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's probably one of the reasons I really enjoy your stuff is because I relate to that so much. Yeah. Because I look like a real piece of shit. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I'm only like a slight piece of shit right. in the real world. Yeah. But it is it is a very interesting it's it's weird it's just weird. Uh, shout out to Andrew. You don't even like Batman, McGuire. Starting to get over it after doing a four years of a Batman podcast. Yeah. I'm just like, man, it's, it's never over. Okay, well, I loved the most recent film. 
I loved it. It I might be it. one of my favorites, if I'm not so my glad favorite. I'm so you liked yeah. it. I've talked to so many, everyone I talked to who's hating on it, and I was like, okay, I thought it was great, but that's fine. No, I liked it a lot. Yeah, it was super fun. Um, shout out to Jeff has comely feet, Ooh. which uh, comely means mean? pretty, yeah. not covered in cum. No, yeah. That's, which, um, do you have nice feet? I do. Oh. I have weirdly pretty feet for somebody that's my size yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and gender. Yeah. I have one follower uh, on social media that's a foot person. Like he wants feet pics? He's never asked. He's very respectful. But anytime my feet do end up in a shot, he's the first to call it out. I mean, look, here's the thing. There is a revenue stream available. But it's one guy. I don't think there is. (laughs) There is a specific revenue stream. If you do not understand what one guy can do. With a good old foot pick. He's, I, 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 it's always a pleasant surprise. Like I've never intentionally on my feet in something. Actually, I do the opposite because I'm, I have big feet and I'm self-conscious about them. And so, but occasionally. You have big, pretty feet like me. Look at us. We, look at me. Look at our big, our big You feet. do have a big foot, I huh? told you. Wow, look at that. <laughs> I know. I mean, mine, I used to have a size 15 and it sh- they shrunk yeah. when I lost all the weight. Okay, mine shrunk too, but not yeah. small enough. I dropped two sizes. I mean, I'm I still a 13. That's still massive. I'm a 10 in women. I wore a 12. When oh, I was that's not as big as, as you think it is. Okay. That's nice of it's you not, to say. That's it's <laughs> not. You're fine. Not as big as you um, think it is. Shout out to Nerd Numbers. Huey, two Stevens in a comfy box. No Vs allowed. Uh, shout out to Bart Fardigan, Patrick Dore, at AV Foundry, Jennifer Fendelander, Bodacious Big Bad Bouncing Bollock Bonanza. Mm. Shout out to Jumping Rope, still a sport, Jeff not liking it, still a fact. Mm. And the most well-prepared dead guy, Big Booty Boy for 2069, and Ricky Cilantro. This was a, a nice, long, casual stroll through the producers uh, with a lot of detours. You didn't have to apologize at all. Um, and if you would like to be a producer, head to uh, patreon.com slash Jeff May. Sign up for that producer tier. And uh, maybe, I'll, maybe I'll say your name. Who knows? Let's talk about your current job. Oh, yes. Um, you work for Read Pop. Yes. And you are the, you're like a talent, or not a talent, but like a guest booker. So I basically did the started doing the reverse the opposite from what i was doing so i started my management company it's like when they hire a criminal to do security because they know all the yeah, tricks exactly yeah it's like that show white color yeah, yeah i'm gonna pretend to know what that is i don't really i just would see the commercials and be like that's about matt bomer being beautiful um so i yeah so i was a manager for x number of years and then last year read pop contacted me and they're like, Hey, we need someone to take over guest booking responsibilities. We'd love to, to see what you can do. So that's what I'm doing currently, which, uh, for those of you who don't know, they do New York comic con, they do Emerald city in Seattle. C2E2 C2 was, E2. I think where they cut their teeth as like their, that's yeah. how they made their biggest growth. Yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. And then Florida Supercon, And then they have a few other shows around the world. And, uh, so I am now responsible for putting together those guest lists and booking talent. And like I said, doing the reverse of what I did as an agent. So as an agent, I would or a manager, I would pitch talent. Now people pitch talent to me, and I say, "Yeah, this will be a cool lineup or whatever." What does it take for you to approve? Well, so I, I, because think- you have to pull yourself out of the subjectivity of your fandoms. Sure, uh, yes, which I like to think I'm pretty good at, uh, because I like such weird, specific things that I'm not. I would never think that I'm never going to assume that that's what's popular. Mm-hmm. But I, you know, I don't necessarily watch every, I'm not, at, like I said, I'm not at, you know, midnight premiere of every Marvel screening, but I know that if, if Thor wants to come to New York Comic Con, I'm not going to tell Thor no, just because yeah. I don't, didn't see the last movie. He was at C2E2 in like 2010 or 2011. Yeah, possibly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we, that's, you know, that's headlining talent. I deal more in right below headlining talent. Um, they call it mid-tier but that, which sounds bad, but it's not. It sounds, it does sound, it's obviously like you're not a Hemsworth. Right. You're not one of the Chris's. Yeah, exactly. It really, mid-tier refers to costs associated, yeah. really. Uh, it's not level of talent. So these are, with the mid-tier, are you still paying for them to come out? Or do they, are these the people that pay for themselves to come out to get a, a booth or whatever? Uh, they're, we're, we're paying them. Okay. We're paying them. Occasionally there's studio involvement. And so we're not, you know, we just did Star Trek and we had some, we had some yeah. talent come in that. I saw you got all my friends hosting the panels and I was I, so jealous. Sorry. I was like, you got Helen Hong yep. and Morgan J yep. on there. Yep. 
Well, so Helen and Morgan are clients of my roommate. Mm-hmm. And when he found out I was doing the Star Trek show. He... Both done Mint on Card, by the way. Oh, have they? Yeah. Oh, that's I awesome. I think Morgan has. I know Helen has a yeah. couple times. I love her. She's a delight. She's so wonderful. Yeah. And she, I think everybody I work with is not very, they don't know much about talent and especially something like that. Mm. The only reason I was tasked with finding moderators was because I, I asked, Hey, uh, I have a couple, I have some people that you don't have to defend yourself. No, no, I know, but I'm just telling for everyone out there. That's not usually something that I do, but I did. If I do say so myself, I did such a good job that they were like for the comic shows. Let's talk about who you can bring in to moderate. I know. I know. I know a guy. I, I know a guy too. I was I like, okay, great. So yes, yeah, so we'll see. We'll see if they if 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 they still want me to do that. But I have I have a good pedigree at this point in time. Yeah, you definitely. And do. I've moderated at Reed. Oh well, that's great. I had my own panel at New York Comic Con. That's awesome. Sideshow, sideshow live. Oh yeah. Uh, and I would like to shout out the person who scheduled that for putting the sideshow panel and the Funko Pop panel Uh-oh. at the exact same time. Uh-oh. What were you thinking? Oh no. The two biggest toy companies in the world that were there. Yeah. And you put them up against each other. Well, so to to defend whoever that was. <laughs> I, I mean, I, it, I, there's so many panels happening. It's New York, I don't I'm not actually mad, I but I was a little bit like, this is so annoying. hilarious. Yeah. yeah. So for New York, it's it's largely out of our control because of the companies that yeah. have such stake that it, if they say we're doing our panel at this time, we have to say, okay. Yeah. It was weird. Cause yeah. sideshow and Funko, I think are, they've got to be very, I think sideshows maybe a little bit lower. Cause yeah. Funko pop just is what well, it is. Funko pop has a much more inexpensive, accessible yeah. product. Is the, you know, what was, thing. what was funny though, is that they gave away a bunch of stuff at my panel and oh, like really? it was not as packed as i wanted it to be yeah. um but like i think i know like two people that want stuff that's interesting which is cool uh, yeah i i'm just been learning about that side of things yeah. the content side is totally uh new to me but i was learning about it because at star trek they let me do a drag show and it was really funny because the guy who's the head of content was like yeah this is becoming laney con she just you know well sure whatever he was he was cool with it but he was also like laughing about it but it's also introducing new concepts to make things not stale it was the most popular programming piece at star trek that there you know you know what it comes down to though is star trek conventions i mean i would say that our in the world of pop culture conventions are the gold standard since 1968 oh yeah so but they've been fairly similar yes. for the past 54 years. Correct. Yeah. I, I went last year to... Um, oh, to creation? To uh, the one in Vegas. Yeah, I'm going again this year. Fun. Uh, and I'm very excited because uh, last weekend, wink, wink, <laughs> uh, as of recording, it'll be next weekend. It'll be this weekend. I'll be bringing up William Shatner, um, which I'm very excited about because uh, I, I look forward to having that hero ruined for me. You know what's so funny? Sorry, I'll just tell you. No, no, this is allowed. He's always been so nice to me. He's probably he's probably great. He's probably a really nice guy. Long term, probably not. Yeah. But it, for an eight minute interaction, he he told me my hair looked shiny and good last it time is. I saw him. Well, thank you. Yeah, it it is. was very it's, cute. This is him stating a fact. I know it was very nice of him. But um, you know, I I I give him a lot of a lot of credit and a lot of room. And I even told another Star Trek actor who asked me, uh, actress, she said, why you know, why is he, why, why him? Why this? And I said, well, he's the reason we're all here. He leaned in when nobody else did. Yeah. And I th- really think that that is worth noting because what Comic-Cons look like now didn't even look yeah. like it when I got into them. I would like to add to that at 91? 92. 92 years old. Uh, I was in his panel. It was the most entertaining panel. Oh, yeah. He is animated. Yeah. He is emphatic. He's entertaining. Yeah. It is delightful. Yeah. Like I Googled his age after I left that panel because I was like, are you kidding me? Yeah. Um, this guy is unbelievable. So that was very, it was very interesting. I'll do you one better. He, I needed something from him. So I called his agent. I was like, I need this. He goes, okay. He goes, Bill is competing in a horse riding competition this, this weekend. So uh, I'll have to get it for you later. And I was like, he's doing, he's doing what? He's riding horses competitively at 92? I got a bad sunburn on Sunday and could barely get out of bed yeah. yesterday. Like, I, don't know. I mean, maybe that's it. What? It's like when you stop, my grandfather was 96 
uh, when he passed. And he like didn't stop moving until like three weeks before. Yeah, I think he grew up, he worked on a farm yeah. and he was mowing. The, he was doing everything. It's like once you stop, then your body's like, oh, so we die now? Oh, well, if that's the case, then I, then we're going to start dying. Now, yeah, right? tomorrow. Because like, yeah. I do not move if I don't have to. <laughs> no, for sure. But the, you're right. But yeah, it's like he he's done it right, even yeah. if he d- hasn't done his career the way everybody would hope that he would have done his career. And I'm not talking about accolades, but more yeah. like interactions with other. I think there's a there's a lot of expectations that I are put on talent and I've seen it, you know, through the course of my career. And I think that while I do think I, I tell everyone you know, I don't care if you're having a good time. You're an actor. Act like it, right? Yeah. There is definitely an argument for being real and being yourself. Mm-hmm. And if you're consistent in your, even if you're a curmudgeon, if you're consistent, I, I, on a lot of levels, I think that's better than faking it because I think what fans, what people want is a genuine interaction. Th- there's a genuine interaction with an asterisk. Right. Which is, I want a genuine interaction unless you're being an ass, and then I want you to yes. fake it. Right, right. You know, like. Right. And what's so funny about my job, and I tell people this all the time, is is they're like, oh, who's, you know, who's the nicest person you've worked with or who's the meanest person you've worked with? And I'm like, well, the interactions I have with them, I don't think are necessarily fair to speak on them as a whole. Yeah. Um, except for Goldberg, the wrestler is the meanest person I've ever worked with. And I tell everyone that because he was so horrible to me. Outside of him, everybody else I I give a lot of room to. Yeah. Even when they're mean to me. Official enemy of the pod. Yeah. Bill Goldberg. Yeah. Right up there with Tom York um, <laughs> from Radiohead. For, what did he do? They stole, um, they stole a song from Portugal the Man on a uh, Twilight soundtrack. Oh, so specific. It was supposed to be Portugal the Man. And so then specific. Radiohead or Tom yeah. York was like, no, I want to do it. And so they bumped Portugal the Man. Oh, no. And so and Zach told us that story on the on the old version of the podcast. Yeah. And uh, I am pulling that Tom York, even though I think I have one of his songs in my Instagram story while I'm recording this. <laughs> That's so still funny. an official enemy of the pod. Well, good. Now you have another official enemy. Official enemy of the pod, Bill Gold. Yeah, listen. He, I'm sure he was having a bad weekend too, but I'm I, I'm not a very big person and he is a very big person. And you know how we spoke earlier about being aware of yeah. that. Uh, he definitely, I felt, used his size. To like bully him? Yeah, to like be intimidating. You want me to kick his ass? I, that'd be he would, fucking, <laughs> that'd he would be, wreck me so don't hard. Do that. Yeah, not worth it. Um, he's, you know, he. I'm sure he's living his best life somewhere. But yeah, for the most part, I'm really. Also, by the way, former wrestlers are never living their best life. Yeah, that's, I saw that John Oliver and I was like, what? Yeah. Oh, I, I'm not sure I have. Is it recent? No, I think it was a couple years ago. Oh, maybe it's fantastic. I did that, yeah. It is fantastic. It was... I, it was I about mean, unionization, I think, maybe? Or poss- it yeah. was about how they treat how they treat them like yeah. cattle, yeah. you know? It was just fascinating. I knew a little bit. I worked with Mick Foley, and who's He's so the nice, nicest yeah. person. The nicest person. And Great performer as well yeah. on stage. And so good with fans. Yeah. Like... He plays, he takes off, at least he used to take off November and December every year from like cons and wrestling related stuff so he could play Santa Claus. Like, Come on. That's the kind of person Come on. he is. Yeah. My, uh, my, I did a, uh, my friend, uh, Joshy G does, um, who's great, super talented and a good dude, um, runs a workout, uh, company with, um, Seth Rollins from the WWE. Oh yeah, of course. And, uh, and I'm not, I, I'm not caught up on my wrestling current stuff. I know names. Right. But that's pretty much it. Um, and then I don't even know most names. So we're at this workout thing and Seth Rollins is there. And, you know, we were going to do like kind of like a working out with Seth Rollins thing. And yeah. this was I was single at the time. And Josh is like, let's get you some photos for Tinder and blah, blah, blah and whatever. That's embarrassing. And, and I was like, I'm not going to go on Tinder. Yeah. I'm, I've never used one that's, and I, no. I won't ever go on an app, but that's fine. But so right before the workout now and I was in pretty decent shape at the mm-hmm. time. But uh, I looked at Seth and I just like, hey, man, if you need help, don't be afraid to ask, okay? <laughs> making the make, making an obvious joke. Right. This guy's in the, be- the yeah, best yeah, shape yeah, of anybody yeah. I've ever met. Yeah. And he just kind of like glares at me a little bit. And he goes, thanks. And I was like, oh, you didn't get the joke. Oh, no. Now I look like an ass. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so I told, I, I told my friend Josh, I was like, oh, I think Seth hates me because of that. And he's like, oh. Well, he likes to be the funny guy, so he probably didn't assume. And I was like, he's the funny guy? Because he wasn't really funny. Yeah. At this. 
I liked him and he was so nice to me afterwards, so but it was such a jarring thing for me, for my joke to not, my obvious joke to not land Yeah, and then be like, oh, now I just look like an ass. Yeah. Now we've just hit a weird point. Yeah. How now, do I come back from that? I accidentally made myself the ass in this conversation and I didn't know how to back out That's of like it. That's like kind of my favorite. That's <laughs> so funny. Yeah. I, um, I also know nothing about wrestling outside of the couple wrestlers that I've worked with or that's yeah. a perfect example for my job of something that's not my wheelhouse. Yeah. And so I seek out those people that it is their wheelhouse. And I'm like, this has been pitched to me. Who is of interest on this list? Smart. How does this work? I think that's very important when booking talent. I have been dealing with, you know, like when they, cause they'll send me like when I do cons, depending on who the program director is, they'll send us like the look over everybody and give us your wish list of five. Yeah. yeah. And so I, I was like, I always say this as I say, I'm going to do you one better. I'm going to give you two lists of everybody. I'm going to rank them in order of one of the lists is going to be, this is who I desperately want to do in yeah. order with the bottom person being my absolute last. That was meatloaf on the last one. I got him anyway because <laughs> she thought that I meant everybody. And I said, one list is going to be who I want to do. Yeah. The next list is who I predict I will be the best with. And those are two different lists. Right. Like if Tom Cruise was doing one, I would want to be Tom Cruise's panelist, yeah. even though he wouldn't be the person that I think I would be the best at. That's really interesting. Oh, but, that's interesting. I, it's more important to me that the show is good yeah. than that I get what I want. Yeah, totally. Um, which is why like I'm currently getting caught up on all these different things that like Jessica Jones, I haven't seen that show in a while. Mm -hmm. I'm hosting for Kristen Ritter. Oh, okay. So I'm binging that show. Mm -hmm. Whenever I have free time, Chandler Riggs, Walking Dead, yeah. same thing. Yeah. Like I'm getting caught up. I'm researching. And that way, like, I don't know if other people are doing that. Yeah. I know that my Star Trek moderators did, but they happen to love Star Trek. Yeah. So that was easy. Yeah. Um, but it definitely, you definitely see a difference. I, we had a moderator last year, not someone I hired who, and this to me is like so easy. So I don't, whatever. She had IMDb open while moderating the Power Rangers panel. I could see that only because it's better to have it, as long as it's not visible. They all saw and they all came oh. to me and they were like, how come our, our moderator knew nothing about Power Rangers? And I was like... Uh, I mean, if somebody gave me a Power Rangers panel, it would be a tough one for me because unless it's the original or yeah. that or that run... yeah. Then I've I have I wouldn't know. This was original. <laughs> okay. Okay. So in that regards, yeah. like it would be tough. Like so, the IMDb was out because they didn't know the names of the characters, I, yeah, or I just know, other projects they worked yeah, on. Yeah, I don't know exactly what the purpose of having that open was, but it seemed like the kind of thing where even just like an hour, an hour of research, yeah. just make some bullet. Even bullet points would have been better than just fully yeah. having the website open, being like, I don't know who any of you are. I research hard, um, and that way because. I don't ever want a product out. I'm kind of a perfectionist. Yeah. I don't ever want my name out with anything that's been done inferiorly. Yeah. I feel um, the same way. Okay. I feel the exact same way. And that, again, goes back to why when making a guest list and there's points that I want to hit, if it's something that I, I know I don't know about, I'd rather go speak to someone about it that yeah. I, I know loves it. Smart. And it's cool working in such a working for a company. So there's a lot of people and it's a lot of people with different interests. And so I'm able to say like, Hey, I really want to do a lineup. That looks like this. How much interest is there? Are you given a budget? I, yes, I okay. am. Can yes. I, can I ask what that budget is? You like, could, what if I had any idea oh, what okay. the budget was, right. I am given a budget that I promptly forget. And then I tell them all the names I want to book and how much money it's going to cost. And then I get told yes or no essentially. Oh, fair enough. Yeah. So yeah, the budget is like a few million dollars Okay. and that's hard costs and that's everything. Yep. Yeah. And then headlining talent, uh, headlining talent is, is outsourced to, uh, to somebody else. Mm -hmm. So when it's funny, cause when, uh, when like we had Tom Hiddleston in London, everyone's like, Oh, you did such a good job. I'm like, thanks. I didn't book him, but I'm so glad you're excited to Thank see you. him. Thank you. But I did book Jonathan Majors. So I was excited about that. <laughs> he I mean, was that's very pretty cool. cool. I was super cool. And that's, that's the other cool thing that's happened for me in the last year of doing this job is I've, I've been able to book talent that I always thought would make a cool guest or, but I could never get them to be my client or 
I have room to try things out that, you know, James Cromwell is a perfect example. Yeah, you got him for Star Trek <sighs> yeah. and that was like yeah. an everybody wins situation. It, it, may, it really was because he ended up being one of the greatest people I've ever met in my entire yeah. life. That leads into another great question I was going to have, which is like, who are who are you gunning for? Like, who are the people that you really want to get on? You know, I at this point. So it's so silly, but again, this is a callback to earlier. I love that movie, The Covenant. And so one of my things is I always wanted to get the guys from The Covenant to do, I would like to do a reunion. That's never going to happen. But Is it because they don't like each other? No, not just, at all. They love each other. Is it just like a financial thing? They're it's, like the fan base isn't necessarily there. They're like, you're the only fan, which is not true. Every girl my age loves The Covenant, but that's another story for another time. But yeah, it's more about like, well, part of it is Sebastian Stan is the antagonist in that movie. Oh, fair enough. And he's Sebastian Stan. I Uber drove him. Did you? Yeah. Oh, that's cool. During the weekend of New York Comic Con. Oh, wow. And, and it was the weekend that they were doing the Civil War stuff. Oh, wow. Because Civil War was coming out. And I picked him up and instinctively said, aren't you supposed to be in New York? Oh my God, you're so funny. And uh, he was like, excuse me? And I had to correct myself. And I was like, oh, it's... You just look like such a New York guy. I'm wondering why you're even here. You know? Oh, that's a good cover. And he was just like, oh, actually, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I, I do live in New York. <laughs> it was something yeah, like he said funny. that. And yeah. then I was like, oh, yeah. And, yeah. And then we ended up talking and he found out that I was a stand-up. And then he just started grilling me about stand-up. Cool. Like interviewing me. I didn't realize it was because he was filming uh, I'm Dying Up Here. Oh, playing a stand-up. Oh, that's funny. That yeah. was, so he's like, how do I act like a stand-up? He was just like, well, so we'll like, tell me about. <laughs> like, that's funny. Yeah. He, I haven't, I haven't, we've met in passing, but we've never really met. Um, but everybody, I mean, he, he and Ricky are friends. Yeah. So he was friends. He's really good friends with Paul Walter Hauser, who, uh, who was my other, he played Richard Jewell. Yes. Um, and he was yes. in, okay. um, He's Cruella. Cruella yeah. Yes. And he was in the Pam and Tommy. He's in Pam and Tommy. Right? Is he in? Oh, it makes sense because he and Sebastian are like really good friends. And also, friends. Um, the guy who did. Oh, he's in I, Tonya. That's, that's exactly. Yeah. That's where his Craig big Gillespie breakout was. Craig is one of my favorite directors. Yeah. Craig, I love Lars and the Real Girl so much, as that's I'm great, sure yeah. you can imagine. I, if somebody were going to do my, you know, story about my life, I would want Craig Gillespie to do it because I feel like. Craig Gillespie, yeah. he understands the weirdo and he gives reverence to the weirdo in a way that nobody else does. And he makes it's not a really punching down. No, version it's not. Of it, it's, yeah. it, what it is, it's that he's making the audience say, well, why? Why are you? Why are you questioning what this person's doing? Why do you think they're yeah. weird? They're just doing their thing. Why is that bothering you? And I love that anyway. So anyway, so, so the covenant, the you'd, covenant, you'd like to do a covenant reunion. I would love to do a covenant. That's reunion. sort of like how my friend Greg did a being human cast Which, thing. Which U.S. or U.K.? Uh, U.S. Okay. It was, so it was like Sam Witwer and Sam, uh, what is it? Sam Huntington? Is that yeah. His name? Yeah. Uh, and it was like this amazing cast, but I was like, and he spent like kind of a lot of money yeah, doing it, was, it. It was in Albuquerque. Yeah. I was there. And I was like, it was is the weekend. market there for this? It was like, not. Because, because <laughs> Sam was still, Sam was well known, but yeah. like. He wasn't what he is now, no. and and like I was just like, and and I think I think he took kind of a bath on that. He did, even though, yeah. Like, I remember that. That he, was there. I was and, there that and, but he's just like what he said is he was just like, I just book who I want. Right. He's like I book my convention the way I want it to, and he's like, and if I go into debt, I'll declare bankruptcy. He's sick. He's just like, and he ended up selling it to Wizard. Yeah, that's and they bought, and they did. and he's like, if you're gonna buy the con, you're gonna buy my debt. And they were like, okay. And then they realized that there was no money in Albuquerque. Yeah, and he just made off scot free. And I, oh, it's the him. best scam. I, lo I'm so proud of Greg. That's awesome. I always wondered what happened to him because he's he never, moved to Seattle. Okay, he's he like. We were friends on social media, and then he disappeared. Just disappeared. And, went yeah. to Seattle. Lives a nice life. Good for him. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna yeah. just disappear. Uh, I couldn't do that. I'm he's, he's, uh, I think he's either dating or married to a very talented artist as well. Oh, that's um, wonderful. And oh, they just have nice. a cool life. He yeah. was very nice to me when yeah. I did his show. He was super nice great. to me. Uh, but I do remember that reunion and I do remember him being stressed because funny, they would not leave the green room because their agent at the time had, I, there was, there was something going on and they were like, don't leave the green room yet. And so there's like a line of people and he's like, they need to go sign. And I just remember watching all this happen and being like, oh, I'm so glad. So I agent, just... Was that Erin Gray yeah. from from Silver Spoons? Yeah, from Silver Spoons. Yeah, it wasn't her, but yes, it was her her company. Okay, yeah. yeah. Yeah, who I adore and they're wonderful and I work with them all the time. But I met her in Boston and I was like, yeah. I think I was in love with you as like a child. I called their 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 company one day. 
not expecting to get Aaron. Fully yeah. get Aaron on the phone and like forgot what I was going to say. Yeah. It took me by surprise. I, I mean, she was just like diet Linda Carter at the time. Oh, yeah. I you know, see that. she was like yeah. very much that yeah. like if Linda Carter didn't ex- Carter didn't exist, Aaron Gray would have been the biggest name yeah, of, yeah, the, yeah. of yeah. the 70s and That's 80s. That's yeah. so interesting. Yeah. Well, she's beautiful and she's lovely. And I think it's really cool that she pivoted into uh, she built this great company full of called Heroes for Hire, which is full of amazing talent mm-hmm. that we see at comic cons every week. Yeah. Yeah. So. Just an incredible, an yeah. incredible cast. It's people, very, yeah. it's very cool when people are able to pivot and transition. And I, I yeah. think especially for anyone who's not very familiar with how Hollywood works, which I think at this point, everyone's seen entourage. So I think they're all pretty familiar, but it's, it, it's, it's a, been a while. It for ha- entourage, Yeah. By the way. I know that's a old, there's a dated, that, that reference. is a bit of a dated reference. I don't know. If you were dating a 22 year old, they wouldn't know what you're talking I know, about. That's true. That's true. Yeah. I, you know, as someone who, Entourage was on when I was in high school and I didn't even watching it with my, I didn't watch it often. My parents loved it. And when I watched it, I didn't see the misogyny or the like, it was just terrible. Obviously yeah. I recognize it now, but all I saw was Los Angeles. And I was like, oh, that's where I want to be. I'm going to be there someday. Isn't that Could you imagine thing? seeing that show and that's the lesson you got out of it? <laughs> I picked Los Angeles because it was as far away from Massachusetts as possible. Okay, that's, that's everyone literally, I know from Massachusetts says that. Well, it's like, because the other option was New York. It's and too close. The way I, that's exactly what I picked is I said, well, if I fail in New York, I can tuck tail and go home and be home in three hours. Yeah. I could pack my whole life up and be home. Yeah. I was like, I can't do that in LA. I got to sink or swim. That's literally why oh, I chose here. Is I had to burn the boats. Yeah. You know, I was like, if I, if I fail here, it's not an option. Failing in New York, I was like, that's an easy trip home. Yeah, yeah. That, okay, that's interesting. So I I was 12 years old on a family trip to Los Angeles. I was standing on the Santa Monica Pier, and I announced to my parents. I was like, I'm going to live here someday. And my dad was like, no, you're not. It's very expensive. And we were both right. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. It, <laughs> we were both right. Yeah, it so. Was. Um, so the covenant yeah. would be that. You're right, though. The the market's not there. The for market that. is not there, but I did get to book Chase Crawford last year, who was in the Covenant, who had never done a convention before. Uh, so I'm very proud of that. Chase is every bit as wonderful. What else and is lovely. he in? Uh, Gossip Girl. Okay, and he's on the Boys. Sorry, he's okay. on the Boys. Uh, he's which, on the Boys. Which now. character is he? The Deep. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, he's so pretty. He is, and he's even prettier in person. It's honestly unfair because he's so nice and so down to earth. And we had met at something previously. And I, I, I'm a very big, like, nice to see you again person. And he was like, oh, where did we meet? And I told him and he was like, oh, and when he remembered it was instant, like we were buds cause the, it was someone's home yeah, and stuff okay. like that. But it was, uh, he was so good with the fans and I, it just, it was really when I book someone and they are how I think they're going to be, or especially if it's someone that I've dreamed about booking for a long time and it works out. It's a real big, I really pat myself on the back. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter to anybody else. Nobody <laughs> else cares. But that was one of those moments where I was like, okay, this job is really cool. I love that. This job's super cool. And I could see how excited people were. And we had Stephen Strait from The Covenant slash The Expanse. And so I got to put their booths next to each other. So I was like, there's my Covenant reunion. (laughs) How are you? Okay, so give me me two people that you're gunning for um, that you want on there. Like, let's put it out there. Because I know I got to wrap. I got to wrap soon. But uh, let's put it out there. Um, I mean, my white whale, my ultimate, which is just so cliche and embarrassing. uh, But my white whale is Keanu. For sure. Okay. Keanu. And let's see. Who else do I want to see? Um, let's go find Keanu. He's probably around here. I right? would love to f- respectfully find Keanu. Right? I I have... He has eluded me for so long. I've come very close a couple times because it's like... it. I feel like if I were going to write some mythical story about working in Los Angeles, it would be like chasing Keanu. He used to buy... French literature. Sure. Oh my God. From my, a friend of mine that worked at a bookstore. See, it's everyone has stories like that. And like he would come in on his motorcycle and be like, yeah. "This is Mr. Reeves. I'm coming for my." B-. And he would like order like, like French novels. Yeah. Sure. My one of my friends was a nanny for his next door neighbor for a number of years. Of you know, it's those kind of stories. We all have those stories. Everyone, yeah. I have so many of those. Or then I worked with an actor who was in a movie with him. And so he was like, well, I can tell you this, this, and this about him if it helps you find him. It's so funny. It's like, yeah. I'm on this like quest. Eventually we're going to connect. Cause that's I, one weird thing about me is that sooner or later they all show up. Yeah. Not always for the best. He seems so likable. He does. He does. So he's one, gosh, this is, um, 
I'm going to another super silly one, but who I think would be fun is Nicholas Braun from Succession, who we've talked about. Yeah. He was in Sky High, which I think desperately loves Sky High. Love Sky High. I think it needs a Comic Con reunion. Get him. A Sky High reunion because you have Panda Backer. Yeah, she already does cons. She does cons. Yeah. And, and that like that's like that's in her blood. Yeah. Um should be great. Kurt Russell would be a big get. Kurt Russell would be a the huge unfortunate get. part is unfortunately Carly Preston has passed. Yes, yes. And um I feel like Mary Elizabeth Winstead might be a tough get. So I she's another one I would love to get. I yeah. love Scott Pilgrim. I have a very funny story about her. Do you? Yes. Okay. She sings a song with my friends. She's on one of the songs oh, yeah. for one of Portugal the Man songs. Oh, no way. Um, it's actually one of my favorite songs by them, too. And um, we were at uh, their show at the Troubadour. And we were side stage because that's just what you do. Brag. And it's not a big deal. But we, me and Adam Todd Brown, who's my co-host on Unpopular Opinion mm-hmm. and You Don't Even Like Sports, we're just like looking – we keep looking and I was like, I was like, this girl looks just like Mary Elizabeth Winstead. And he's like, yeah, she does. I was like, I kind of want to tell her, but you know, I don't want to bother somebody. Yeah. And then later they're like, we're going to bring up one of our friends to sing a song with us. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Mary Elizabeth Winstead. And she went up there and I was like, yeah, she did look like her, huh? That's so funny. Yeah. I think she would be super popular. I can't. I of course she would be incredibly popular. I, she would be so popular. Another one last person who's super random uh, that I would like to book is Shannon Woodward only because that is who I get confused for in Los Angeles. I have people be like, oh my God, you're that girl from Raising Hope. And I'm like, I'm not, but <laughs> that's cool. So that's why, and Westworld, right? And Westworld, yes, yeah. of course. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. yeah. That would be an interesting. Do, do you think she would do it or do you think she'd be like, I don't understand the market for I think she might do it. I just don't know. A lot of times the disconnect is what somebody's expectation is versus what their actual appeal is to people. Yeah. And I have to be the one to be like, I can I can take this much of a risk that you're going to be popular, but I can't take this much of yeah, a risk. Yeah, we can give you a this much guarantee yeah. as opposed to it. Yeah, you know. and so when, a lot of times when someone's like, I don't understand why so-and-so doesn't isn't in the space, it's either because they don't want to be or it's because they want too much money. Yeah. And that's just, and I'll, I'll, I will be honest with an asterisk about that with people because they'll be like i've even like hung out with actors and it'll be like a picture of me somewhere and like oh you should get so and so and i'm like yeah they're not really they're thinking about it yeah that's true i mean that's fair though like yeah. uh, they, when it comes down to business you have to remove that yeah. like there are i have that a lot like the business and friendship thing where like some of my favorite people i don't think are the best comedians yeah and that doesn't mean that i don't think they are brilliant and wonderful oh, yeah. and charming and i would be remiss to not have them in my life yeah but i really hope that they don't ask me to book that and it's yeah. like and and so the, yeah. the ones that are if you're listening it's not you no, um no, but there not. are there are other people where like and they, they've said they you know i've been the like, you don't really necessarily think i'm funny do you and i'll be like do i have to in order for us to be friends yeah because i love you right I love you as a person yeah. and I I would be my life would be infinitely worse without you. Yeah. Your comedy is not for me. Right. And or and like and if you don't if that's a deal breaker for you then that work on your comedy I guess. Yeah, just be better. Yeah, work on your material yeah. if that's the deal breaker yeah. because I want to keep you as a friend right. and I and I value you and and I you know yeah. if that I I don't it's unfor- I don't even ask people anymore. Like I don't want to know because no. if you don't think I'm funny, I don't want to know because yeah. I want to keep that friendship yeah. strong. Yeah, I get that. Well, and there's I'm I'm friends with actors who are not right for the Comic Con space, and as much as fun as it would be to have my friend at something, it's I know it's a bad business decision. There are a lot of times too where I know like certain things. Like I am very big. In a very small circle right. of people, you know who you are. Like yeah. I'm, I have, I have this really great cult following. Okay. I am, I'm an indie comic. I don't chase clubs. Yeah. I, I've kept my integrity from that. That's fine. My bills are paid, and I always say, like, because I have friends, a friend that runs a convention. I was like, look, I was like, you want me to come out and do panels? That's fine. And I'll tell you, I'll even throw in if you want to do a stand up show, I'll run and even curate a stand up show for you. Wow. But on top of that, I also understand that you might not think I'm a draw, and I understand that. And if you would rather have a Brian Posehn show, <laughs> I'm not going to take that personally. Yeah. I sure would like if you put me on that show. Right. Be, you'd be great on it. But at the same time, yeah, I'm not stupid. 
I think that's, it's good that you can recognize that because I know how hard that is. It's, it is. And I understand it, it's hard, especially when yep. you've, you work so hard for something and you're like, I've had to, I've had to tell myself that I'm great so many times so that I don't cry. <laughs> <laughs> so if you tell me I'm not, it's like real hard, yeah. but, but that's something that's been an, an interesting, I actually don't even like to talk about what I do when I'm here, when I'm at events or parties or whatever, yeah. because I do, just because you know me or just because you know, you've heard of me or Comic-Con yeah. doesn't mean I can help you. So yeah. Don't make way. this happen. Yeah. yeah. I can't. Well, that's too like where I'm like, I'll make the joke like, Hey, you know, people that do yeah. that, but, yeah, panels, but for you actually can't for you, you actually make sense in my space. But, but, <laughs> yes. But at the same time too, is I'm not going to put right. you in that position. Yeah. I, I wouldn't, I, no. I try, I don't. And that's probably to the detriment of my career to be a hundred percent honest, I'm but I, I won't put people on the spot or make them uncomfortable in order to advance my career. Yeah, I'm the exact same way. And I've been in rooms where I'm like, if I went and pitched to somebody, is there a, a world where this changes the trajectory of my career completely? Yeah. Yes. But also when I got in, when I get invited to someone's house socially, I don't want to be That's that not person. The thing, yeah. What, even if I was, if, if I was in a, at a birthday party and Keanu Reeves was there, I would not pitch to him. No. I probably wouldn't even go talk to him. You should talk to him though. I don't know if I would talk to him. You kind of have to. Maybe I would. He's so nice. I, yeah, bro, that's what I've heard. He is so nice. Um, well, so we have, uh, we got to get going, obviously. Yes, um, Lainey, let's, uh, let's talk about what people should be on the lookout for from you. What should people be consuming of yours? Because I will <laughs> add, by the way. And maybe I shouldn't uh, I shouldn't have this uh, be the thing here, but we're going to talk about Halston Blake. Oh yeah, let's talk about and, Halston but Blake. But <laughs> that's going to be that's going to be the um, Patreon exclusive content. Oh, we're cool. going to talk about um, Halston Blake. But I like that because just saying that you don't know is that her OnlyFans? Is that like we what don't is know? It? We don't know. But I'm going to suggest that people check out the Bear Moon by Halston Blake, <laughs> and we'll talk about that in a second. But what other things can we promote? What read pop? Obviously, yeah. I mean, go to cons. Uh, you know, I I don't know. Um, I Halston Blake is is a good thing to promote. I think that uh, go to New York Comic Con, go to SuperCon in in Miami, go to Emerald City. I'll be at all of them. Uh, more than anything, support your local Comic Con. Please do support your local Comic Con because it's cool that I work for this big company that does big shows and we love every single fan. But I got I cut my teeth on the small shows, the twenty five hundred person show, the show that you know of the guy and his family put together. So support those shows because those are really. It sounds silly to say, but that's really where it, it all started. I love you. <laughs> Thank you for that because I, I'm such a fan of the small. Me too. I call them basement cons. Yeah. Um, those like lower tier yeah. to to you know because like you you have your mid tier cons yeah. and stuff like that. The ones that aren't you know the barn breakers but are really great. Yeah. Barn burners. Um, <laughs> So that's great. And then uh, we should follow you on Instagram. Yeah, you can follow at me on Instagram. I My account is private, but I, it, only because I had a stalker. And maybe still do. Don't know how they're doing. If you're a listener, please don't follow Lainey. And if you're the, if you're the stalker. Yeah, please don't try and follow me. But yes, my first and last name is all of my social media, yeah. uh, Twitter and Instagram. Please, please follow. And that's at Lainey Labens, L-A-N-I-E-L-A-B-E-N-S. Yep. Um, so definitely check that out. A uh, huge fan, by the way. Um, love your work. Oh, thank you. Um, so that being said, uh, everyone check out Lainey. And if uh, you should check some of the stuff I do out too. If you haven't watched yeah, me. Yeah, he's funny too. Have you not, if you haven't watched me fake lose on um, <laughs> bullshit on Netflix, go ahead. Uh, that's fair. I will say I've been to Mint on Card and having comedy with toys as a background is a very enjoyable experience it's weird and unique i love it somebody told me i forget who the comic was but it wasn't it might have been dana gould he said uh every ingredient of your show shouldn't work that's funny <laughs> and your show works better than any show i've done yeah it's super fun uh and that that alone like the he's like the lights are on he's like there's the like an 11 year old in the audience mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and he's like it's such a weird show but it's such a great show yeah and that was a very nice compliment to receive. Well, it's true. Uh, well, thank you. Uh, but yeah, Mint on Card is back. You can check us out. Our next show is going to be June 10th at Blast from the Past on beautiful Magnolia in Burbank. So uh, and if, uh, it's so it's so it's far for you. It's you live in me, you live yeah. on on by the water. I do. Uh, so, but for the rest of you guys, if you're in the Valley or something like that, it's second Friday of every month, Go. uh, unless I get booked on a convention and have to travel and right. then I move it to the first Friday. Shout out to May. Uh, but <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. So you can check that out. You can find me at social media at Hey There Jeff Rowe. And if you are listening to free, please check out patreon.com slash Jeff May. You get early access to uncensored episodes plus bonus content, which we're going to do in a couple minutes, uh, a couple of seconds, actually. So, Lainey, say goodbye. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thanks for listening. Bye. Hey everyone, our artwork is created by Justin T. Brown, who can be found at Artness by Justin Brown on Instagram, as well as Artness by Justin Brown.com. That dope music you heard is by Troy Nababon, available at Troy Nababon on Instagram, as well as at Troy Nababon.com. Nababon is spelled N A 